From designing a simple Hello World design to building your very own IP over the XI protocol, this small course that will start in a minute will make you go from a newbie to a proficient in engineering. But first, some crucial information about this video. I will link a GitHub in the video description alongside all the useful resources. This GitHub will be organized with each tutorial episode having its own folder with ready to copy and paste files in case you struggle with the coding part. The tutorial is fast paced so don't hesitate to pause and really take your time to understand their various concepts. However, I did my best to reduce it to bite-sized instructions so you don't fall asleep within the first two minutes. To get used to the basics of the workflow, we will start by detailing the Hellword example I briefly described in the Zinc in 2 minute video. First of all, install the Vivado Suite. There are tons of tutorials out there, just don't forget to get support for your board when doing the installation. Then create a new project, don't forget to choose your board or part number and start a new LTL project from scratch, and you'll be greeted by an undeniably wonderful light mode interface. First of all, create a block diagram, because hardware is just like software, it's pretty much just boxes with inputs and outputs you can put together like Legos. Hardware being a bit more complex to work with than JavaScript, using blocks is a very welcome feature. We'll start by adding the processing system of the Zinc. The processing system is more or less like an ARM CPU that we can use to run a regular program. As you can see, Viva gives you the option to run connection automation. This works because everything is standard and the manufacturer did the job right. This is one of the reasons block design is great. You win a lot of time and you focus on the actual logic of your system. As you can see, the Zinc processing system already has a UART interface. That means we could technically boot an Hello World program or even an entire OS on it without anything more than this. Doing this would be great, but if we wanted to do normie software, we would use a Raspberry Pi. So we are going to get our hands dirty and add some more hardware to play around with the board LEDs. To do this, we'll add the XI GPIO IP provided by Vivado that will automatically connect to the board's LEDs. Don't forget to configure the IP by using the power of double clicking. Now, run connection automation and Vivado will automatically interconnect everything together. Once this is done, you can reorganize the layout and validate your design. If you have these warnings, keep validating until they go away. Now, generate an ATL wrapper. Now, all these options on the left on your screen summarize what happens next after you think your design is good to go. First, design synthesis will generate a netlist, and design implementation will take the say design and try to figure out a way to implement it on your board's logic. If everything runs smoothly, it will generate a bitstream file that you can use to program the board's logic. Congratulations, you are not down with the hardware part. Now we will focus on writing software to tell these components how to work together. First, export your hardware and don't forget to include the bitstream. Then launch the VDIS SDK and create a platform using the file you just exported. The platform will give you access to the board support package, also called the BSP. This is important, as it gives you the access to pre-coded drivers made by the board manufacturer depending on what IP you use creating your design. Build your BSP and import the XIGPIO example included with the BSP drivers that will blink an LED. This piece of software works by writing to a specific address to initiate an XI transaction in the GPIO IP. The real value is either 1 to turn the LED on and 0 to turn it off. If you did not understand that, it's actually a pretty simple concept and we'll have the exciting opportunity to dive into it 5 minutes from now when we'll be designing our own XIIP to drive LEDs. Using this example, we can also add an error word that will get transmitted by UART because it's using the board's libraries. Now we are pretty much done and we are going to open a Niper terminal I use Putty, but you can use Minicom to feel like a true hacker. Plug in your board in JTAG mode and run the software in Vitis. Vitis will automatically link all the necessary libraries from your BSP, generate an L file and boot the files for you. This abstracts away a lot of complexity and you don't need that complexity as a beginner, so that's cool. Congratulations, you should now get an hello world in your Putty terminal and a blinking LED. If not, use the comment section so I can troubleshoot you. Now we will move on to designing our very own XI GPIO IP at the register transfer level to get our hands a little bit more dirty. Now that you get an overview of the hardware software development flow, we'll try to make our own XI led IP. First, create a project and create a block diagram. To use our own IP, we have to create our own IP. 
So go in Tools, Package IP, and select XI4 as an interface. This is the technology we'll use to communicate with the rest of our system and tell our IP what to do from the processing system. Then specify Light as the XI type and make sure you have the same parameters as me. Now select Edit IP to immediately start working on it. And Vivido will open a new temporary project and create files that will handle all the XI protocol for you. I will do a video on XI, but for now, just understand that you communicate via registers. The master writes in the slave's registers and the slave uses the data to do stuff. Because I know you are very smart, I also know that you understood that we'll use this register's data to drive the LED. So create a new source file. This file specify the actual hardware logic to tell how we are going to drive the LED. In this new custom module, as an input, take the clock signal and the slave register value. As an output, use a single bit register. The logic is pretty simple as it's just an LED driver. On each clock pulse or rising edge, we'll take the last bit of the register and route it to the output that will drive the LED. This way, if you write 1 in the register, the output will be 1 and the LED will turn on. Save the file and include it in the user's logic in the wrapper. For the output, route it from our custom logic module all the way up to the top module so Vivido understands it's an IP output and we can plug that to our LED later on. Now you can give a name to your IP and package it nice and tight to use it in the main project. Note that this is going to be pure hardware logic implemented on the FPGA, meaning you, yes you, just created a silicon ready hardware design. You can now go back in the first project block diagram to add your very own logic in the design. First, place the processing system and your custom IP logic that will be implemented as hardware in the FPGA. Run all the connection automation and make output external by right-clicking the IP port. Name the port whatever you want and we'll now use a constraint to tell Vivido this port goes to our LED. To determine the pin number of our LED, you just take your board schematic or simply read it directly on your board's PCB. Create a new constraint file by right-clicking the constraint directory and map the output port using the name you gave it earlier to the LED spin number. Constraining output of the design is the step that brings your design to life by giving access to your FPGA IOs, and thus the real world. If you don't do it, the implementation will just not work as outputs are not mapped to anything. We also specify what voltage is used by the pin. You can find this information on your board schematics. As most zinc boards are the same, you can just go for 3.3 volts. Then you should be good to go. Remember to write down the address mapping of our XII IP to know which address to write once we write the software. You can now generate the bitstream directly and Vivado will run all the steps in between. Export the hardware, launch Vitis, create the platform and build your BSP. Now create an empty application. Create a new main.c source file and import xparameters.h. This header file comes from your BSP and if you control click on it, you notice that it keeps track of the memory mapping of your system. Find the memory address of your IP LED driver and use it in your main c file to write to our ipx size register address. Write a 1 to our base address using a pointer to the set address. Plug your board into your computer, press run and see if the LED turns on. Congratulations! It works, and if not, chances are you messed up something in your logic. To debug this, I will link a very well-made tutorial from Xilinx to use their verification IP for XI. That was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed following along this tutorial. If you want to learn more on SOC, like and subscribe in order not to miss my upcoming courses and I will see you in the next one.